here I am uh, many months after these videos were recorded trying to catch up a little bit. Uh, it takes a lot of work and I spent the summer um, mostly with family. So um, just quickly going to jump in here. Um, this video talks a little bit about my change in process um, and the continual effort of trying to get the beams out of, out of the boat is... Um, a very realistic challenge which um, I achieved getting the first beam out and in the next video um, I'll be talking a little bit about and doing the repair work to it so um, enjoy I hope you enjoy the videos and please subscribe and like so as an example of the problem with the lithium batteries um, I had uh, everything hooked up I've got, you can see there's an alarm light on the Victron. It's set to, um, it's hard to see that the light's on there really. They all kind of look lit up with the sun, but I can tell you right now the alarm light is on and it's set to charger only. Um, so that tells me that something's wrong with the batteries and I've got absolutely no voltage showing here. So what I'm gonna have to do now is check the batteries and probably jump start them. I'm going to give that a shot right now. So that alarm light is on likely because I've turned on the power to here. Um, so it, it's actually plugged in, but it's, it's not seeing the batteries running right now. So just to verify, I'm going to check that they aren't giving anything right now, which is the case. It's giving, well, that's saying two volts, which, which is interesting. This is that one, and that one's saying 0.15. So I believe that they need a jump. Let's just see. So I've just got a regular 12 volt battery here. And, um, just going to do a simple simple little connection positive to positive negative to negative so that just gave a little spark that's a good thing now let me check them So that one is now saying 11. So it's just switched on. The charger's just switched on. So now it's seeing them and it's uh, bringing them up. So, so there you go. That's, that's the downside of these is um, I haven't been here for a while and they just ran down, um, which would happen with any battery. And the good thing is, is that they're protecting themselves. But you need to have either a, a little lead acid battery or a, um, or a, a, a little zap charger or, you know, one of those car starter charger things, I think. I haven't tried it with one of those, but I think that'd be a good idea to have something like that aboard. It's a lot easier to manage than this. Having said that, this good old Die hard <coughs> uh, lead acid battery has been a blessing to have aboard just as a backup. After zapping those batteries, it's now coming up, showing at 11.6. So that's very low for those. So they got run right down, which is which is unfortunate. What happened was some of my neighbors took the cable and uh, I wasn't getting any power. So I've got these pieces that I've made that are meant to be the pivot points um, for each of the points where the beam is on each hull. And then these are the risers that, or the pads that the, the beams will sit on. And that's a spacer that's going to go on the opposite side of the beam to... So this plan of using these risers to pin with a bolt going through them to the beam as a pivot point, 
I've decided after this video was made or these videos were being made um, was unnecessary. So I actually had about 20, 30 minutes at least a video showing myself working with those particular beams, shaping them up and everything. I've decided not to include that because the truth of the matter is I didn't use that process. I did something different, which um, will make a little more sense as things go on here. So I'm just including a little bit of where I started to go with it. And here I am telling you that I didn't go with that. So that's kind of the process that I'm going through anyway. Um, people do this in different ways, but I'm, I'm, I, I try a thing. If it doesn't make sense, make a change. That's okay. You know, learn as you go. Um, that's the beauty of, of working on your own boat. And um, I'm, I'm doing all the due diligence to check in with the right people, the designers, and checking out all my specs and making sure that it's safe. But um, it just made sense not to go this direction. What I, what I really need to do is actually remove a beam. To, to, to get these in place. Um, um, and then I need to modify it. I've got pieces on the beams here that I don't want to have. These are the pieces that held the old uh, mast step. And I'm going to be removing all of that. I'm going to change the deck so that it's carried on top of the beams in the same way uh, one of our colleagues, Don Henderson, has done on his tahini. 51. I like the way that that works. There's nothing to trip over. You've got the same level with the, with the deck all the way across. Uh, removing that beam will also include sanding it, painting it, inspecting it, making sure that there's no cracks. I know that in a couple of them there are. So I've got to have a look at that and there will be some fiberglassing going on with that as well. This is going to drop down onto this piece when I remove the rubber. So um, this is part of the removal of the rubber. Is that this is going to be the, support, the stronger part of the hull, which is right along the, the bulkhead um, under there. There's extra strength, but also it just has the strength of this corner. Whereas where that rubber is holding now, it's not as strong. It's just over those horizontal pieces going across, which don't really have a huge amount of strength. So I'm glad to see that that easily fits in there. Again, it's not that important because these slide up and down. Um, this bolt, this bracket has a separate piece from that bolt and that's what slides up and down here. So um, I can adjust these however I want once that rubber's out of there. But this is what they'll sit on right here. It's very warm, especially for Ireland. There is a nice cool breeze, so that helps a lot, but
After attempting to begin to lift the beam off, I realized I still had more work to do to get it moved. I had to remove this old engine mount, which I'll be replacing. It won't exist anymore in the new design. So here I'm just trying to quickly get it out of here. The old engine mount and the structure that originally held an old uh, an engine that actually had a drop down shaft, which I don't believe ever worked from the original owner. One side lifted of this beam, boy. Whew. I was able to lift one side without a crowbar there, so that was pretty cool. So now I'm going to just try and do that on the other side. So now you've heard my story of that awful tragedy. So quickly that she finds time to Just taken off. Uh, this is the piece that was supporting the deck that I had cut, and I left a little bit of wood, just these small pieces left, and. This is the reason why I'm going to I'm going to end up putting the deck on top is most of these holes where the nails were in is rotten. It's all rotten. So those just fell right out and that that is not healthy wood right there. So um I believe that's separate from from this and it's been fixed on. I can see there's a screw hole right there. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I might, I might take it off. Um, I 
that's not a good sign because if that rot travels from there into the beam, that's definitely not a good thing. And also, when this was built, the framework that I took out that was underneath the deck held the engine. And this is where there were coach, coach bolts going in. And it's not rotten, but I wouldn't say it's a great solution because this is all fiberglass but that's just created penetration for potential water, which undoubtedly has happened. So I'm gonna to have to have a look at that, maybe sand it back and just see what it looks like and then fill it. Uh, hopefully it'll be okay. There's another one there. Those two carried, they were frames that carried, help support the deck in the middle, but were built, were put in to carry um, an inboard engine, which then was converted to carry an outboard, which is what I had on here.